What is going on everybody? It is David Palmer, the Leo King, and we are here for Deep Astrology Live on Facebook, and we are super excited. You know why? Because we are entering a portal. We have actually entered into this portal March 5th through the 11th of 2019. Now, what is this portal? We're going to talk about it today. But if you never watch the show, this is where I channel the astrology live to you, and I talk about the astrology, what the transits are for this week, and then, of course, we go deep into the charts, which, of course, are brought to you by Astro Gold. You can get it on iOS, Android, and on your MacBook, or you can get it on Solar Fire for your PC. So check that out. Thank you so much for all of those charts. Now, the reason why I'm calling this week entering a portal, and I don't use portal lightly, right? Like, I, like portal is a very random thing I very rarely use because I believe portals in astrology are very, very unique. I am not one of those people where it's like, oh my God, the three, three, three we just had. I'm sorry to say. Okay, if you want to get into numerology and you want to get into all that stuff, okay, like what is that, a portal for a minute, a day? I'm talking about a portal It's going to be lasting for weeks. First things off to start off this week, Mercury retrograde in Pisces at the last degree of the Zodiac, definitely bringing a very weird vibe to things, a re-look at things while the universe is still moving forward. We've got all the planets direct except Mercury, which went retrograde. Now, this is the first moment since the beginning first week of the year of 2019 that we have had a planet go retrograde. So we have been really moving a lot of things forward. But with Mercury now retrograde in Pisces at the last degree, which it was just weeks ago that Chiron was sitting here at the last degree of the Zodiac, which brought up a lot of weird energy that of you kind of going through your deep spiritual cave and these weird things that aren't working out and puzzle pieces that have been trying to be figured out. And now Mercury retrograde has kind of thrown us for a loop because it now is going to try... And I mean try, because when Mercury's in Pisces, remember, it's in its fall position. It's not the happiest here. And at the last degree of the zodiac of Pisces, it could be very like, well, where is this going? What is this taking this information? And it's almost like being a little pebble in the middle of like, you know, the cosmic rays of the universe. And it's like overwhelming. It's like, oh my gosh, there's so much information. There's so many things coming our way from the universe right now. And trying to decipher this, it's like having a little decipher code. Well... When you add to the mix that Uranus will ingress Taurus within hours on March 6th at 12.30 a.m. Pacific, 3.30 a.m. Eastern. So, you know, this is Uranus coming into Taurus for seven years. Now, Uranus entered Taurus May 15th of 2019. And I want to let everybody know that, you know, it left and went back into Aries at the very beginning of November of 18. So we had this, we had a little taste. We had a little taste of this Uranus Taurus vibe. But we're getting the full dose now. And when you go back to the last time Uranus entered a new sign, which was Aries, which was 2010, it then, of course, went retrograde and went back into Pisces. And when it went back into Aries, we had the Fukushima earthquake on the exact same day. So I'm not predicting a crazy earthquake, but we are going to be thrown into a whole nother dimension here. Now, right when Uranus comes into Taurus, hours after that, a new moon in Pisces conjunct Neptune. This is the home of Pisces, right? Neptune is the ruler of Pisces, and a new moon with a moon in Pisces, the sun in Pisces, and Neptune talk about going through just full surrender into, I guess we're all going to just see what the hell happens next in our lives. And it's an exciting moment, I think, because there is magic to be found. There is magic that is showing up, but we are really not sure of how or what is exactly going to be the malleable, like, actual thing that is going to be the way that it's going to go or the way that it's going to be. There's a lot of uncertainty about things. And I think the certain thing is this intuitive aspect of when we look into our future. 
Now, when we look also at this portal, I want to let people know that I'm not doing that just because these three transits happened within pretty much of a 36 hour period, not even really, okay? Like a 24 hour period. When you look forward in these weeks ahead of this portal, we're talking about we're going to be moving into the spring equinox with a full moon in Libra. We're going to be dealing with Mars, square Venus. We're dealing with right now Venus at the exact spot of where the lunar eclipse was on July 27th was Mars retrograde in Aquarius. So we are dealing with some very, very, very synchronistic energies right now that are bringing up major elements in your life when it comes to what stories are coming to a close. What is the things in life because Uranus, when it moves into Taurus, is dealing with a Venus energy now. Uranus has been in a Mars energy. So that's why this last decade has been so bah, 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 who am I? How am I going to integrate all these parts of myself? Now it is, what is good for us? What is better for us? And Uranus and Taurus wants us to ascend. It wants us to find a way to be better, create more, manifest more. But man, it's coming at a time when there's a lot of confusion. It's coming at a time where this portal is pulling us out, literally, of a reality of all the other planets moving forward because if you think about this new moon on Pisces, you think about this Uranus entering Taurus for seven years, and then you think about this Mercury retrograde, there's this like kind of pulling us into all new energy and new zones, but every other planet's direct, and there's this weird element of us kind of having to really see a rite of passage here about what is no longer serving us to go to a better place, have better relationships, have better things to manifest, be more on track with our life. You can't forget Saturn and Pluto, which is very iconic because these two are one of the biggest conjunction point transits in astrology. Whenever you get Pluto and Uranus, you know, I mean, you're dealing with a lot of energy, the squares that we had all through this last decade. Now we're getting Pluto and Saturn. This is a totally different vibe. Remember, Saturn and Uranus, they, they're, they're, they're father son. They also rule Capricorn and Aquarius. So instead of this kind of battle for this kind of scorpionic, rebellious, kind of intense, you know, quarter square point that was from the 60s that happened through this whole decade, with the fact that Uranus is now in Taurus, the Pluto-Uranus square in cardinal signs is done, okay? We're done. We just finished that craziness. But now we've got Saturn and Pluto, which is much more physical reality and restrictive and getting on point and the south node is on this spot and so we are we are seeing these kind of beautiful aspects start to come up right we got mercury which of course retrograde in pisces which is definitely showing us a lot of new ways of understanding all this we've got a new moon that's definitely on neptune gonna put us into what is really gotta go and this is where your intuition is on point with what is going to go and what is what has got to leave and and what also is magic and what is on your deepest spiritual path but you got to now have to come to the zone of there is like really no i guess you could say i don't want to say points for second place i'd rather say training wheels which i've been trying to say for a little bit here but the training wheels are definitely off this is a time in our lives where Pluto and Saturn demand this, you know, Capricornian structure of things. Things have to be done a certain way. And with the South Node and Pluto becoming closer, which by the way, by the end of this month, Pluto and the South Node conjunct in Capricorn for the first time since 1517. Okay? Been a long time. So 502 years. So it's been a long time. Now, these are very rare elements. I can go on with the portal energy for days. That, that whole lunar eclipse on July 27th that was squaring the nodes that was on top of Mars retrograde is exactly where Venus has been covering today. So Venus is trying to understand the intensity of what has been going on since basically the summer. Uranus is coming back into Taurus to now really kind of reveal the weird energies that we went through from May of, of 2018 through November of 2018. And how are we going to take all these really random and intense 
places and put them into where the future is going. If you actually look at this as a whole, this is amazing. I don't want people to like think that this is like super scary or something. Like, oh my gosh, this is like, they're going to be scary. I really believe this could be the most magical moments of our lives during this portal, but you have to let go of the stuff that no longer serves us. I'm going to be real. Taurus is a hoarder. Okay. This weekend I was out. So, or, you know, we were in Phoenix. We, we did the t I did a TV show uh, for Good Morning Arizona. And then we, we did a meet and greet, which by the way, all the people in Phoenix that came to the meet and greet, it was amazing. Love you all so much, so much love. And I love all you that watch this show too, just as much. And I, you know, I remember I pulled out my wall. We was talking to some awesome people about I had my moon in Taurus. And I pulled out my wallet and some, I had some cash, but I had like receipts. Like I'm a total like moon Taurus, right? Like how many, how much stuff do I really need in my freaking wallet? You know what I mean? Like, do I really need to carry this? This thing's like f freaking five pounds. I might as well carry another phone. I mean, you know what I mean? Like I'm old school. Like I have a full wallet. Like Taurus tends to want to, you know, it wants to feel things. It wants to have it. It wants to know it's got it all. It packs an extra bag. You should see me when I go into a hotel. I have a whole bellhop just for me. And I'm like gone for a day. It's like crazy. I pack up a whole SUV full of trunks and all these things, right? So Uranus and Taurus is kind of like, you don't need this anymore. Later, you don't need this anymore. Later, this is not valuable anymore. Get rid of it. Peace out. And Venus also is the ruler of relationships. Now, this isn't Libra, but we are finishing a 35-year cycle since the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in Libra as Saturn and Pluto are now finally completing that long transit in Capricorn. And going all about, you know, when it does come to relationships, what makes sense for your long-term path? And there's been a lot of weird questions about this space. Relationships have been intense, and, you're right, and that's especially because Uranus was in Aries since 2010 and is leaving literally on the 6th, which is for me, I'm recording this on Tuesday night. It's happening within hours. So we're about to step into a whole new ball game, folks. This is a new ball game. And this new ball game and this new portal is going to test you. Do you hoard? What is it that you were afraid of letting go? And I think a lot of this is going to be looking at things in a new way. Because when Uranus went into Taurus in 2018, Mars was in Aquarius squaring that spot. Zero Taurus. It was gnarly. Also the nodes with Venus retrograde. Venus was retrograde in Scorpio in November, uh, or it was October 30th of 2018 exactly in this spot. So this, this Uranus thing is bringing up, you've got to look at your life from May to, to, Ju, Ju, to, this is crazy, there's so much. Let's just say from May to August, okay, of 2018. Then the things that happen in your life from October, November. And then how everything has kind of brought you up to this point of, well, where the hell, I know I went through all this, I've released this, I've let this go. But what is left here that is no longer going to work? Mercury retrograde tendencies are always about to try and go back to the past. Old people, old situations that haven't been cleared up yet, especially in Pisces. And a new moon on Neptune. Oh, talk about you want to go replay some tapes. You want to go back into the past. Uranus and Taurus is going to show you the past and what is good and what is bad. What is working? What is not working? Because pretty much the fundamental aspect of Taurus is like, let's just make it happen. Let's have it actually work or not work. So Uranus tends to throw, you know, weird gears out of alignment, right? Like if you rode a bicycle and the chain, you never sprayed it with some lube, guess what? You're going to go down the street, Uranus enters Taurus, and then the chain's going to break. This is more of Uranus, Taurus stuff. Uranus, Aries is a lot more shock value, like bam, wow, Mars, bah, right? Venus is a lot more subtle, but the negative dark shadow part of Venus is like, oh, so stuff breaks with Uranus in a Venus ruled energy, especially when Uranus is in like, let's say Libra. Oh yeah, out of nowhere, that relationship's not right. Pfft. When it's in Taurus, it literally is that moment of like, yeah, I haven't changed oil in my car for a couple weeks. I'm going to push it off. Uranus just comes into Taurus. Pfft. Ah, pff, car breaks, overheats, uh, uh, you know, pull a rod, something, you know, there, there's a, you know, there's so much about self-care in about the physical sense of the things in your life. And there's about having to find out that you can create more and go into this magical journey if you're willing to 
look at how you can better yourself, how you can look at the quantum mechanics of things. And especially when you look at this week, remember Mars is in Taurus. And so now this is the first time in a long time. And we're talking 70s plus years since Mars and Uranus have both been in Taurus. So Taurus is becoming a whole new game here, folks. This is a whole new ball game. Aries has Chiron though, zero degree. And Mercury retrograde was right there looking at, it was like, you got to think of like, remember, Aries is the, especially zero degree, is the very beginning of the new world, the new, right? It's the new day, it's the new dawn, it's the beginning of astrology. 29 Pisces is the end of a whole story. So it's like looking at the ass chapter or the, you know, the, the back cover of a book and then looking at the front cover of a new book. And so Mercury was like, oh, the little puppy. I'm ready to come into Aries. Get me out of this fog and all this stuff and confusion. Oh, wait, I got to go back. Bye. And then, but Chiron's there at the, at, the, at the first degree. So I think that there's this whole element of Mercury kind of going like, well, maybe I kind of want to step back. I don't know if I'm ready to go on top of Chiron yet and deal with kind of this, you know, having to find courage through crazy situations that make no sense. And this is teaching you to keep going. And I think that a lot of the lessons right now with Uranus and Taurus now coming into Taurus, you know, all this Uranus and Mars and Taurus energy is to find your value, find things that are really of worth to identify with and to find a better way to connect with yourself, to connect with the world and connect to others that are on your same platform, that are on your same vibration, that actually are going to be able to create things. When people, this is gonna bring up massive crazy people issues during this portal, okay? Because whenever you're dealing with Mars and your identity and you're dealing with Uranus people, okay, Mars and Uranus in the same sign, haven't been together in Taurus since like the 30s. So when you get this whole thing going down, guess what happens? You're gonna get with, okay, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm manifesting this, are these people on that same page too? What can they offer? What can I offer? And can we come together? It's a trade. Taurus is where we trade, right? It's like, hey, you got some seeds for some corn? Yeah, you got some good soil? Yeah, I'll give you some soil for some seeds. I mean, it's very physical, monetary-based, spiritual-based for your self-worth. This is also gonna just throw you into the mix of realizing codependency issues on, oh, you know, like, I need this person because I don't have that. I need this situation because I can't have this on my own. I don't know how to create this on my own. And this is what all the subconscious, like whether it's codependency, whether it's subconscious, whether it's like addictive, of where it, and it, it's going to go beyond a little bit more of the scope of relationships. It's going to go deeper into this whole element of like, hey, do, do you really feel confident in yourself? Especially with Chiron and Aries, there's a little bit of like a limp dick syndrome going on, you know what I mean? I'm not meaning literally, but there is like a spiritual limp dick going on when it comes to like, can I really do this? Or I think for the lazy user, it would just kind of just feel like, you know, like I don't want to go out and put on a dress and do my hair and take a shower and put on my makeup, it's gonna take forever. I'm just going to sit on the couch. I don't know if I have that much energy to go do this right now. But if it's worth it, that's the spring of life that comes up. And I think that what you're going to notice too is because when you're on Taurus, especially in 1934, I mean, if you go look at the astrology of 34 with your and in Taurus, I mean, we're talking about, and I know it triggers people, we're talking about the rise of Hitler. We're talking about countries changing all these things. We're talking about you know, monetary systems uh, changing, literally. And who was in control of money, especially now that Pluto and Saturn and the South Node are in Capricorn. There's a lot of funky stuff going on. How funny when I bring up trade, China and America are trying to figure out their trade. What's gonna happen with North Korea? Now I'm going into some of the more physical stuff because we're entering a physical world. We have spent the last decade, and especially if you go in 2009, and especially 2010 with Uranus finishing in Pisces, um, this is also where Mercury is retrograding during that, Mer that Uranus-Jupiter conjunction. That Uranus at least had Jupiter there when it was coming across. And I think that was also part of the whole shebang of the Fukushima earthquake. It was Uranus and Jupiter conjunct. It was kaboom, right? It was massive energy. And that was finishing 
some major cycles if you look at the Jupiter Uranus cycles in the past, but this is different. This is Chiron cycle, like Chiron on this spot, like, and then with Uranus, which is semi sextile Neptune and this new moon. If you look at this new moon, I mean, it's great. It's got Mars in sextile, so it's like, let's keep going, but it's Mars in detriment. So we're kind of like through the mud having to keep going. And there's a lot of confusion and there's all this past stuff. So you're going to have to clear all your past stuff before you can move into the golden lantern, I guess, of life. There's a little bit hermity, okay? Like the hermit card. Like you all better get your canes out and get your little lantern on, get your little hoodie on and start like, you know, walking around, start being like, yo, okay. Like I got to kind of keep going, but I got to be wise here. And I definitely don't want to like go back into that crap. Have you ever thought about why the hermit's all hermited out and he's all old in that card and tarot? Because that motherfucker went through some shit and he doesn't want to go backwards and he's in like a hermit protective mode. He's wise, but he's wise because he learned that, you know, he went through some crazy shit. You don't want to be that person right now. You don't want to go backwards. You don't want to go backwards. Uranus wants to move forwards, but Uranus and Taurus is saying like, hey, it's time to let go of that thing that, you know, why do you even have it? Why do you even have it? You know what? It's like, I, I just am just blown away of what's going to happen. And I think that the world prediction energy, because Uranus is in this ingress, because this new moon, because of Mercury retrograde, I think on the world stage, we're going to see in this portal in the next couple weeks, when it comes to the world, when it comes to your own life, when it comes to relationships, when it comes to changes of, you know, who's in power, who's the valuable one, who's not, Who's the people that are actually going to create things who are done with their creation? Because this is an ending of a transit. With, with Mercury retrograde in Pisces, it's ending the understanding of the Chiron ending. And it's also a new moon on Neptune exact, which is allowing us to really see what has come to a close. What has spirit kind of divinely in your life said, this needs to be released. And this is what is popping up right now is where do you find the compassion in yourself to let go of things, which is hard because a new moon, semi-square Uranus and Taurus is not ready to let anything go. I don't want to let it go fully. It's kind of the creep who like, you know, let's say like in high school, I remember I had a buddy who like was obsessed with this chick and like he had like a picture of her and he would like carry it with her all the time or with, with him all the time. And be like, bro, like you guys ended like in ninth grade. It's like, yeah, man, but that's like the love of my life, bro. Or I'm going to put my brother on blast right now. My dad, uh, my dad, when we had goldfish, one of them died. And so long story short, we put it down the toilet. And my dad says, oh, we're putting the, the goldfish down to heaven. And my brother thought heaven was down the toilet. But my brother really kind of got, I think, a little messed up from that. He was really young. He's like six years old, five years old. So we, my brother and I had um, the fish tank in our room. And it was funny because he actually, we had the net. We saw the net. We're, we're six and seven years old. We're not dumb. We, you know, he puts the net out and he put the goldfish. He put the goldfish in his hand. He, he didn't want the goldfish to leave after I think he saw heaven down the toilet. I think that, you know, there was a part of him like not wanting to ever let go of a fish again. So, but he was, he was young enough to not know that the, the fish kind of needs to live in the water. So he took the fish, he put it in his hand and he put it in his pocket. And my brother went to school with the fish in his pocket. Now, what am I trying to make sense of this whole story here? It's like, we want things in life. I get it. Uranus is going to show us what's, what's worth having and how to learn also to d disconnect from what, what's having and knowing how to understand the worth of it, understand how we can embrace it in our life, but also understand that there's just some things that we can't have. There's just some things we can't have. And I think that's a hard part for us in our lives. And that's what Mercury retrograde on the spot where Chiron just left of a 50 year transit which was the first time in our lives we were consciously aware of Chiron at 29 degrees Pisces since Chiron was found in 77, is allowing us to kind of understand the things that didn't work in our lives. Now, those are a lot of things that we just covered. When we go towards moving forward in this week, I mean, it, 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 I think this is a very positive time just for the sheer fact that we have Saturn which is in sextile to this new moon, that is saying, 
like let's keep on a, a path that makes sense for our long term. This is not a time to get distracted. This is not a time to get double down on your addictions. This is not a time to double down on your insecurities. This is not a time to do that because this is a time for you to really invest 100% in who you truly are and own that and know where you're going. And Saturn needs, is gonna keep control of this stuff. So I don't think we're gonna see kind of the crazy Uranian kabam that we think. Uranus is that fallen Taurus anyway. I think that it will still have its shock value, but it will be controlled. It'll be about power. It'll be about who's in power and who's in not. And, and that goes to you in your own life. Are you in power of yourself over your own issues, over letting go of the past? Are you in power when it comes to letting go of things? Are you in power of, or are you trying to hold on to things too much? This is really going to be powers in the world changing too especially during this three week portal of this Mercury retrograde, because how ironic when Mercury comes back direct on the 28th, all the planets are still direct still. So that's why this is a weird portal. While we're still in a reality, it's like a psychedelic trip into seeing our lives in a different way. And that's what's the most important thing to notice is that you're going to start to see signs that you have never seen before. You are intuitively going to feel things that you've never felt before. You are going to start to see in your life what makes sense to create and go towards to the future and what things that are not. And we have the sun sextiling Saturn this week. We have the moon, which is sextiling Saturn. We've got a lot of positive aspects here. But I think that the hardest one is that semi square to Uranus. And I think Uranus coming over the zero degree spot with the shadow zone is definitely going to bring up a lot of the past that was very crazy through 2018 and the beginning and, and really it was the, the last six months of 2018. It's almost like we got to clear out whatever happened with all that stuff. And Venus is in Aquarius and I think that Venus in Aquarius is, is, is a very good element because it's helping us see, okay, you know, when it comes to our values, when it comes to our want, we need to see what's about the future. What's going to be about people that make sense in our lives, that are going to move forward, because that's what Venus in Aquarius wants. Venus in Aquarius wants to move forward. It wants to be with people that are in the tribe. And this is about finding the right tribe. And sometimes we're going to have to let go of parts of ourselves that don't allow us to be part of certain tribes that we know we could be in, but we have to face our own hoarding, our own insecurities of what we feel like we need to have in order to feel good. This is really going to be where it's like, do you really need to have that to feel good? Are you, can you let go of certain things? Can you just feel good about the enlightenment of understanding how great feels? And I think that this Pisces you know, element and all this Saturn element, and when you get the sun here, it's divine timing in life at its perfect core. This new moon is about the, this is about the perfect divine timing in your life. If, if you're going to use this Mercury retrograde as, oh, I am not on time, I get it. There's some people who got to this spot and I've been getting a lot of clients and a lot of people on Facebook, on Instagram, especially been writing me, especially when I'm doing my live Q and A's and they're like freaking out. Like I knew I was supposed to do something, but I didn't do it. This Mercury retrograde is going to allow you this last chance because we do have all the planets direct when Mercury comes back direct, but it's going to be much harder. I'm just going to be honest with you all because Mercury's going to stop on top of Neptune and it's going to take a long time to get forward. And, and during that last, I think it's like 12 days or whatever of the planets direct, like, uh, I, I'm sorry, April is Saturn retrograde, Jupiter retrograde. And you got to remember Saturn and Jupiter are major, major uh, parts of this because they're in their home signs. Neptune's in its home sign. The sun is covering a lot of that. The sun's getting ready to square Jupiter in a week. So, like this is where you don't want to use this crazy portal here and start like, you know, trying to double down on the addiction of, I don't want to let this go. I can't let this go. Because coming into this, being a light worker, you got to let go. You got to let go of things that don't make sense anymore because this is where you can go so high. Your Uranus and Taurus teaches you, okay, only take what you need. Now that seems very satirian. But remember that Uranus is the father of Saturn who taught Saturn a lot of this stuff. Because at the end of the day, Uranus just wants to get us up there. And sometimes the elevator to heaven, is, if you look on any elevator, and I've been on a lot this last week, it's 
literally says, how much weight can you hold on this elevator? 11 people, 3,500 pounds. If you think that you can just bring all this karma and all this stuff to the next level of a better life, I am sorry, there is not enough weight in the elevator to hold you and hold that and hold this. And you know, we cannot sit there and be the pawn shop or whatever the pawn went on history channel and just start like having and bringing everything from the old fence and this and that. Like this is definitely a time where there's a changing of the guard in the universe with people. There's a changing in the guard in your life with people. There's a changing in the guard in the things that you're going to have and what you're not going to have anymore. What's not working in your day-to-day -day life? What's not, especially with Saturn here. I mean, Saturn's trying to say, you know what? I'm, I'm ready to go up. I'm, I'm going retrograde in April. I don't want to mess around. I want to get to where I want to go and get on a path. And I got Pluto up ahead that I got to deal with that's basically going to try and control me or give me more power than I've ever gotten before. And the South knows there too. So I'm a little delusional and thinking I'm going to get everything I get. This is where you're going to see where the subconscious is like, where you just think you can, you can have it any way you want. Or can you surrender to the divine timing in the universe and just let the universe kind of show it up to you? Like last night I was playing a slot machine and I actually won, like I think like it was like 170 bucks. And I was like, Pfft. and I remember I was laughing because I was like, I never win slots. I'm much more of a roulette guy. And then some chick comes up and goes, here, here's three bucks. I don't need it. And I remember I took it. I was like, okay, thank you. But it's like, you know what? You got to be willing to like let the universe kind of define things now and show things and what's better. That's what you, the universe is a, a Uranus. And when you look at the moon this week, so then it comes off of this new moon, then it's going to come over Chiron and Aries. And then it's going to come into Aries and square Saturn and square Pluto and square the south node. But trying Jupiter, so I think that this week there's about this new identity, this new world. And then this weekend is going to be the big dog because when Uranus and the moon will meet in Taurus, boom, that's going to officially feel what this new thing will be like. And quite possibly, if I were to do predictive astrology, it would be this weekend where you start to see kind of the more intense stuff because Venus will be exactly at nine degrees, exactly where Mars retrograded in Aquarius last year on June 26th and with the south node that was there. And guess what? That's where Venus will be at the exact same moment that the moon is going to be coming into Taurus that night and pfft, come over your honest. So this week is a very big buildup at a new portal to the new world, but the, you're, you're in between worlds and the new world's showing itself. And this is just saying, what, what's not going to work for this new world? Piece it out. This is going to bring up the things in your subconscious. Let it go. This is going to bring up the stuff in your soul. Piece it out. Like, like just do that. But you're going to have to learn to, with the North Node in Cancer to be easy on yourself about it. Sure, we want our emotional security. We want to be taken care of. But we have to learn to take care of ourselves. And sometimes we have to learn to take care of ourselves. I, I, whenever I watch this, that hoarder show, it's like, you know, it's, like, it's like all those people are there to take care of the hoarder. And the hoarder is just like, and I'm not putting down hoarders, trust me, because I'm a hoarder myself when it comes to random stuff. I think we all hoard in a lot of different ways. We all have some little freaking you know, secret little thing that we hoard, whether it's like some box full of this or some box full of that, whatever. But it's always on that show that I always am like, you know, look at all these people trying to help it. And it's about learning the self-care of like, you know, having a 7-Eleven cup from 1983, you know, with the straw still in it, with a little bit of that very rare flavor that maybe Pepsi tried, like that flies and mold and everything, but you loved it so much and you just like the sentimental value of it, maybe it should be left out of your life now. This is like looking at the weird stuff. We're dealing with Uranus, we're dealing with Neptune in semi-square, we're dealing with the sun covering that with a new moon. And then, you know, the moon in Taurus and Aries, like we're starting this new cycle with the moon coming into the first signs of the zodiac. And so it's not bad, but Mars is getting ready for a trine to Saturn next week. So there's some positives to this portal, but there's also delusional mercury retrograde square jupiter mercury retrograde you know in pisces already alone you know this is where you're gonna have to see a bigger picture a wiser you're gonna have to be wise and you're gonna have to see the bigger things and you're gonna have to see what is no longer serving a higher and better soul and uranus is gonna beat your ass down if you don't do the better thing for yourself 
or you don't have the quality thing. It's just going to go, no, sorry. Because I'm, I'm honest. You're honest in Aries is over. You know who you are. You've seen. You've played all the characters. You know who you are. And there's no more point anymore to do things that you shouldn't be doing. Taurus teaches you to own your worth. Like, it's like, I remember when I was looking for jobs forever, you know, and, I'd, and, and this is a very Saturn, Pluto, and Capricorn thing, and I'm going to end with this before we go into the charts, is, you know, we're at a time in our lives where when Uranus was in Taurus last time, was, we were just coming out of the Great Depression, and that was a global depression. I mean, Germany went de into a depression after the stock markets on Wall Street crashed. You know, the world is coming out, and that was Pluto Cancer, right? So Pluto was in Cancer with Uranus and Taurus last time. And now we got Pluto and Capricorn. Now there's so many jobs. People are just like, <laughs> I'm too good for that. Like McDonald's is like begging people for jobs. Like there's people get, you know, you go on Craigslist and there's a million jobs everywhere. It's like, I'm too good for that. 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 And that, I'm not saying that's bad. It's a good thing. But I think that you're honest at the same time, if you start having this kind of cocky attitude of like, I'm too good, I already know my worth, I already know my value, you're honestly gonna kick you in the ass again because it's gonna say like, okay, let's test it. Let's see if you're really good. So it's gonna be putting you to positions now, especially with Saturn and Pluto coming closer, and especially now with Mars and Saturn getting in a nice trine, and with Venus and Aquarius kind of testing your value in a unique way and putting it through a pop quiz out of nowhere, okay, you think you're good, let's see if you know how to manifest. Remember all the Scorpio energy that we've had since October of 2012 and that finished on the first week of January, right when the planets all went direct and when Venus especially came into Sag and ended that whole entire six and a half year cycle of massive, massive Scorpio retrograde karmic energy. In evolutionary astrology, Scorpio is cleaned out. So this isn't about what you externally need, but whether or not you know how to create it within yourself. Whether it's finances, whether it's love within yourself, whether it's in a relationship, this is like learning non-attachment. This is about learning that you can be okay and settled and valuable by you on your own. So when you think, oh yeah, I'm, I'm super good. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm the best uh, astrologer in the world. Yeah, right. Like, you know, I know I'm not the best astrologer in the world. Or if I were to say I'm the best jet ski racer in the world, or I'm the best cook. Yeah, right. I already know that. But you know what's so funny? Is sometimes you could actually be in the part where you're like, I'm not the best at this. And then you're honest. And Taurus goes, yeah, you are. Let me show you. Bling. So it's like, you're going to see people who denied themselves of their own value. You're honest. Help them figure it out. And then you're going to see people who are like, oh yeah, I'm the best at this. I'm like the best actor in the world and I'm this or I'll never leave being the queen of England. Like, pfft, like quick. That's a little prediction, by the way, that's coming up here. And Brexit, that's a whole nother thing during this portal and retrograde cycle and how that affects the world and now how that affects everybody on the planet and the monetary system. Because this whole thing is all replaying 1934. And no irony, and I'm not saying that they're the same people, but the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth, is born zero degree Taurus. And in 1934, during Hitler's rise to power with Uranus and Taurus, he was born on the same day, zero Taurus. So the Queen and Hitler, two very powerful figures in Europe during the last Uranus Taurus, or let's just say both Uranus Taurus transits that are happening right now. This could be the flip of all that, right? So maybe it's the rise of Hitler in the 30s, like, and it's the fall of the queen and the changing of the monarch. And I, that's my biggest prediction, is the monarch and the queen and what's been going on. And, and, and there's a lot of weird stuff that's going on there and how that's affecting with Brexit and that's how affecting the EU and that's how affecting global economy and trade and that's how affecting all the world and how that's going to affect who's in partnership with who and and if you look at the EU's chart as 1993 chart, the original, in, 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 you know, the original form of it with a Venus retrograde in Scorpio, a Scorpio sun, all that stuff, guess what? <laughs> that EU thing is not looking too hot right now as Uranus coming into Taurus and relationship troubles. And especially with Mars there, you're going to start to see that this whole Brexit thing and the Queen and all that stuff, all that's all interconnected. Don't you look the other way. And Uranus and Taurus is also going to wake people up now, I'm going to use one last analogy here, and it's actually a story. You know, like Alex Jones was just on Joe Rogan this week, and I recommend people go watch it. Because even though 
Some people might, might not be able to handle Alex Jones or they don't agree with what he's done in the past or they don't believe in everything that he says. He brings up a lot of good points about looking at the world. And I think the last like big, you know, Uranus Aries bomb was that. I mean, honestly, he dropped as much as he could. A censored figure dropped a bunch of stuff of truth or whether it is truth or not, but made you look at life a little bit differently and what's going on. And all this Uranus Taurus stuff is going to bring us into the 1930s, especially 34, all the way into the end of the 30s. And let me tell you, go do your history books. I don't need to sit here and tell you, I'm not a full blown story, I'm an astrologer, but start to see what happened, what was the crazy things, what was the crazy experiments, what was all that crazy shit that went on during that time and that led to major wars and all that stuff and playing risk and having all these games. And we are at a more intense time than ever with all this. So this, this Pisces transit, this new moon here, this is about clearing your crap up to be ready because we are coming into a whole nother ball game. Like you gotta dust off all the crap off your uniform. You need to get over the last 10 years because that was what taught you. You already know we're in a new game now and it's about putting the skills to the test. You're on the batter's box, it's three, two count, it's the World Series, there's bases loaded and you are on the batter's box right now and there's only, and it's three, two count and you gotta hit a single to win the game. That's literally where you're at right now in your life. You have to do it. To get where you wanna go next, your, your, your skills are gonna be tested higher than they've ever been. And the whole entire world is going through the same thing. So, before we go into the charts, I wanna make sure that everybody checks out my March 2019 webinar because they go really deep into what's coming up. And of course, we're gonna be doing an awesome event this weekend here at High Vibe Studios, which actually, if you're in the LA or Orange County area and you wanna be part of it, email craig at theleoking.com and we're gonna be offering a live stream version. So we're gonna be putting all this up on highvibe.tv. Uh, I'll also put up some links on my Instagram and, and so forth. So, but we are going to do how to help you get through this portal and I'm gonna be doing it with the Peace Dealer and I have some special guests to be announced um, that are gonna be in the studio for this live event. But me and the Peace Dealer are gonna be rocking it out, live event on the stage here, we'll be in person, we'll be doing some meet and greet stuff and we're gonna be doing an awesome live stream about how truly to get through this next portal. You know, him and I have been connected with astrology for literally the whole Uranus and Aries transit, for real. So it's gonna be interesting for him and I. Him and I have a lot of Taurus connection and we're gonna do this big entering the portal, talk a lot about Uranus Taurus and whatever he feels a freestyle and I feel a freestyle and we'd love for you to be part of the event or if you're in the area and you wanna come to an awesome event too. And right before the charge, I am gonna show you a quick clip here of the high vibe dot tv lightworker school that i put together it's a five minute clip while i get ready for the charts but we're covering human design we're covering shadow work we're covering so many things of course i'm doing my e-commerce uh, spiritual business and we are covering tarot with Jax, and it is awesome and i want to show you guys all some clips of what it looks like we are not doing the holistic health anymore it didn't work out so i'm doing something different i am going to be giving my newer school leo king elite at a very low discount. So you can get my tier one, tier two, tier three, all of my videos. Like, what is it, Craig? 15 videos per tier, I think, right? So that's 15 videos per tier. That's 45 videos as a course. You can get the all in one. So that's gonna give you 45 videos. And then with the other four videos of 12, that's 48. That's almost 100 videos. Check it out right now. I'll be back with you guys in five minutes. Don't, don't go, don't leave, because we gotta look at these charts. Watch this vid. Hey, this is David Palmer, the Leo King, and I want to talk to you about my class that I'm doing on the High Vibe TV Lightworker School. Now, this part is going to be about building your spiritual e-commerce business, and the reason why I'm doing this is because there's a lot of different programs out there about building your business. Now, you can see it in a lot of different entrepreneurs out there, but. Being in a spiritual business, especially when it comes to astrology, psychic work, tarot work, channeling, whether it's any part of your spiritual journey, it is a little different than just running a typical business because there is this really deep spiritual side and you don't want to, I guess you could say, convolute 
the spirituality with the business side because business is extremely harsh and there's a lot of pressure with business and I think the, they're, they're very opposite forms. You know, spirituality is all about free flow and, and, and of course, you know, being much more compassionate and easy, but then business life can be very, you know, difficult. Business life has all these aspects of really having to push hard, you know, follow guidelines. And, and there's a lot of things that I want to help people understand of that you can still have a business, follow the rules, and be very successful, but at the same time, not convolute your message. And I think that it's important when it comes to content today, the secrets that I'm using with how to use content and how to build from the bottom up. You know, I've been doing this actually every day since April 10th of 2012 with a video, but I started this business all the way back in 2009 when I really started doing my first readings. And then it really took me a long time to figure out a lot of the do's and the don'ts that really held me back, whether it was th certain things I was doing about readings and then the taxes, all the way to being able to build a whole entire TV studio and to have employees and to actually put content out there that'll reach people. There's a lot of things I'm gonna cover, but I'm wanting to teach people to actually leverage their business to get out of building a business off just doing sessions. A lot of people, that's how they live. I did it for a long time, but to be able to create a world and products and, and certain aspects with your spiritual motives and your, your goals to get out of that kind of having to be based off your whole time because time is everything in business and doing readings every day constantly will drain you and will make it harder to create more of the things that you want to in your life. But there's all these other schools that we're doing that we're covering shadow work, human design, we're covering so much, the tarot that are really in depth and really high quality and we're really here to help you. So thanks so much for all the support. Make sure that you check it out. I can't wait to see you in the school. And everybody else that's on HighVibe.TV, we're super excited to have you on. We're going to translate our anchor into these new beliefs. These, we think of a lot of inquiry work and shadow work it comes up around limited beliefs. I want you to think of beliefs, what we're going to create are limitless beliefs. Limitless beliefs. Remember when I talked about creating your vision, your new story, and I told you to take off that hat of the rational, logical mind, and I said, really go for it. Let it be just infinite in its potential and possibility, and really let your imagination run wild. What if we could use the tools of the brain that create the most imaginable thinking the, the brain the the most powerful part we don't it has like its own function to work for us what if that what if that can work to our detriment we started to train it to work as our ally so we literally start to train the mind to become our ally we make best friends with our minds so that we can start to use it as a tool rather than a master now we got raw potential here so this could be one of those fun flings, this could be something that ends up in marriage, but the magician card is just showing that this is open to the potential. If one or both of you do not honor this potential, then of course it jeopardizes the whole thing. So we have to take a look at the full picture. It certainly doesn't look like a bad one. And the fact that we got three major arcana, and then of course the ten of coins, one of the most positive cards in tarot, uh, means that it looks like it'd be a pretty it'd be a pretty powerful and transformative relationship all in all. Now let's take a look if we were to dig a little bit further into something. Uh, you know, does this connection uh, does it look like this connection is what I need right now, or is it do I need to focus on something else right now? Right. Ego tribal in the yellow is all about either sensing what we need down here in these root to spleen and solar plexus. And then it's all about taking that awareness and acting on it through the motorized will of the ego center and either getting to the right occupation to deliver what the tribe needs, to get the right support from the members of the tribe in order to move forward towards something, and finally to control our resources and distribute them proportionately and in balance for the entire 
Ciao. So thanks so much for uh, checking out that high vibe little preview, not only of what the network's going to be like as Future Life is moving to the new app of High Vibe, but the Lightworker School that we are going to be initially launching here in the next couple weeks. We're taking pre-registration now, of course. Um, you're going to be able to get all my Leo King Elite astrology courses. You're going to be able to get Jack's awesome tarot. You're going to be where he teaches it from the beginning all the way to the advanced. You're going to get Sarah and her shadow work where she goes through 12 different awesome series of how to deal with shadow work. And do not miss Dylan. When it comes to human design and his 12 videos about human design from the very basics. I don't know if you all know I'm a manifesting generator 5-1 baby. I don't know what you are. Do you know if you're a projector? you know if you're a manifester? I mean, I all know Craig's a generator. This is what we're all doing now. And you know, this network as well, of course, with everybody that's on Future Life, we're all moving on to this new platform. And we're really trying to, as we're building the new platform and the apps are getting approved, to show you the new quality, the higher quality, and to really take, when you look at this Uranus Taurus energy and you look at what's going on in the universe, to the next level, to a better vibe, to a higher vibe, and to a quality vibe that is really going to deliver things to the best. So thanks for checking out that preview real quick. Now let's take a look at today, because this is a very interesting day, because it's right before, of course, Uranus moving out of Aries, right, 29.59, and it's going into Taurus at May 6th, no joke, 12.30 a.m., okay, so... We're literally, I'm talking to you literally hours before your is coming into Taurus. Now let's look at this dark moon as the new moon is happening in the morning. And I'll show you the chart for that. I actually did a chart for the new moon, which is happening literally in hours, okay? At the exact same time that just today, Mercury went retrograde. So within a 24-hour period, period, Mercury went retrograde in Pisces at the last degree of the zodiac. Uranus is leaving its transit that's been in Aries since 2010 and been in the Uranus Pluto square that started in 2010 of the neurotic and crazy change to find who you are and the real destiny and the real path and who you are. If you want to talk about spiritual community and light workers and all that stuff, this is what it was about the last nine years. I know there was a lot of first waivers who were doing it a long time. So you got to give the elders credit and the people that were doing it for a long time in the 60s to now because they were the ones that got us to this point. And I want to give a moment of honor to all of those people that are here now and have passed because they have helped us all get to this point of this spiritual evolution to a higher, more brighter life and to a more aware and conscious space. And honestly, if we really want to take tonight and we want to take this new moon and we want to take this Uranus ingress into Taurus and the Uranus, Pluto and Cardinal signs ending, we can attribute all of this to those elders since the 60s and even people beyond, but it really is the people since the 60s of the Pluto-Uranus conjunction point that have got us to this point tonight. And I want to give my honor to those elders. I want to give my honor to those that don't like to be called elders, and maybe they're not, that you all have got us here and to thank you and to know that your first wave, that your energy that has pushed this whole new collective conscious energy this whole push to really show people the different world that we were all masked under this age of Pisces in to help us all empower ourselves to know our true path and our new true destiny to go into where this new earth, this new higher vibration is going. Now, if we do look at Venus, five degrees, the lunar eclipse is at four degrees. So today, as Mercury went retrograde, Venus was leaving four degrees and covering that weird spot since July 27th. And that was a very intense spot with Mars that was retrograde, of course. And then, of course, the south node that was also there as well. So Venus is definitely picking up the understanding of the whole entire Mars retrograde transit now that happened in 2018 from July 26th into September of 2018, right? So there's a lot that Venus is trying to understand about what, went, what, what was kind of like where we felt like we lost. Mars on the south node in a retrograde is like a loser vibe. It feels like we, 
were losers in a way. It felt like we, did, we, we tried things and it didn't go exactly the way we wanted to. And so Venus is trying to kind of repair the self-worth, the value, to show you that that future is possible. And so this is a very beautiful moment right now because actually, even though that things didn't go the way you thought it did go and was supposed to go in 2018, especially the last six months of it, 2018, this Venus, and I know it's so weird because it's like kind of the hidden gem of what's going on underneath these major, major transits happening. This Venus actually is at the point to help you understand right now as it's almost out of that zone on Saturday, which I'll show you at the exact point when the moon and Uranus are going to conjunct to help us understand this stuff. So this is where, if I were to look at this on a more deeper scale, really everything that went wrong in, at the end of the last six months is about to go to the right direction and actually be built in the right direction. But this is the conundrum. Mercury retrograde in Pisces is creating people to go backwards and think that maybe they could fix something from the past that didn't work out instead of looking at it as new things that are moving forward into better alignment, okay? Because remember, Uranus is still in shadow. There's still a lot of energy from March into October, Mar or May of fi May 15th of 18 to that first week, I think it was November 2nd when Uranus left, okay? So we're in that shadow phase. Venus is not out of that understanding fully of the Mars retrograde till this weekend. And Mercury, of course, in retrograde is gonna have us go clean up the past, but also not be delusional to actually think with Mercury retrograding on top of Chiron and Aries of what we want that doesn't make sense or us trying to find the courage. Like we, like, like we can't repair what's going to be, like that's not part of a higher divine plan, okay? So especially as Mercury is going to retrograde and square Jupiter. So I, I just want to make that point very clearly. Um, now let's move forward to the actual moment of Uranus ingress into Taurus, which is happening exactly hours from now at March 6 at 12:28 a.m. we are going to have Uranus exactly at 00, zero boom Taurus with Mars there in Taurus we are officially in Taurus now Uranus will be here for seven years okay and how ironic that in seven years is also when we're getting ready for Neptune to leave Pisces right <laughs> no coincidences and so I think that it's very important for people to notice that even though Neptune and Uranus are in their semi-square Okay, not a very fun transit. It's interesting to, to notice that, you know, these are things that we want to hold on to that actually we need to move forward into and let go of to get to the spiritual better realm that's non-chaotic and better instead of holding on to things that are chaotic and keeping it more chaotic. Because when in seven years, when Uranus comes to the end of Taurus and Neptune comes to the end of Pisces, this beautiful sextile is going to happen as Neptune will be at zero Aries, Uranus will be at zero, uh, you know, or I, 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 it's not exact, but you'll start to see that we are going to come out of that 45 degree angle in the seven years here. So like, you need to realize that also in this next seven years, we can't mess this up. This is a point in this portal that is opening. This is no longer what we went through. So even though it's 2019, you got to look at the 20. 10s as over at this point in a weird way. I know it sounds crazy, but it is ending now a little early. 2020 itself is a monumental change moment, but it really is now that it feels like what has gone on for the last nine years is ending. And so just process that and, and, and think about that as Uranus enters Taurus tonight as of course I'm speaking to you and the rain's coming. Um, but let's go even deeper. Look at this in this 24 hour period and it's not even. So eight hours after Uranus goes into Taurus, we have the new moon exactly at 15 degrees 47 of, of Pisces. And so now we start the new cycle. So let's talk about new cycles, a new moon and it's on Neptune and it's a new moon semi-square over to Uranus. Okay, a 45 degree angle. There's a kink in this, in this new moon of moving forward about what you can truly manifest and you need to, you need to test your self-worth here. You have the power to create this new life. You have the worth 
Don't let this Mercury retrograde, which Mercury is a tricker, little trick-or-treater who's also a trickster and does all these weird little games in our head. Don't start to play tricks with this new energy of thinking, well, maybe I can just, with especially Neptune there, be totally delusional and think like, oh, I can actually have the way that I want it to be and like hold on to this old thing that didn't work out in the past. Like Venus is showing us as it's crossing this spot that we are moving into repairing or or allowing the things that we didn't think worked that are positive, that didn't seem to go the way, but have been able to sustain themselves. So the things that have been continually, continually being able to sustain themselves without chaos, things that make sense in our actual reality, things that make sense in who we are, things that make sense that are actually gonna do the world and the planet a better place, are the things that are gonna work. But the things that just kept falling apart, not working. This Mercury retrograde is going to truly help us understand to let it go. This new moon on, on Neptune is going to help us let it go. So don't get delusional and try and think that chaotic or situations that didn't make sense or they didn't work out or they just kept kind of bouncing back and forth. Don't think that that stuff is what's going to be repaired and work. It's going to be new stuff. It's going to be stuff that you were trying to make happen and maybe there was a delay because of those chaotic situations that needed to get out of your life in order for you to get to this point to where they could move forward. Don't use this next three weeks of trying to go backwards and where the chaos was and try to repair that or try, you know, clear those things. Clear them, clear them, clear them and move into the great energy that was sustainable and got you to now. I mean, I'm going to use a personal example that you all experience since you watch me. I mean, look at Future Life. I launched it in 2018. It was great. And there was problems with it. And, you know, then I built, we built High Vibe at the same time. And it was kind of like a beta thing. It wasn't supposed to be, but it took a lot more time. And I, you know, even when we were doing the business plans and stuff, it was a year cycle that I had looked at that it would become real. And it did come to the year cycle and it was like, this is going to work. And then we built the school and we built the new apps and here it is going to be launching all up, you know, after this whole period that of this here and it, and it sustained and it was not chaotic, but future life, no matter how much I loved it, no matter how much I thought it was a great idea, it, it, it makes more sense to go into high vibe. And, and, you know, it's about letting that go and moving into that platform and, and creating a better platform and, and a better platform for you as a customer a better platform for the way that it works with the apps, uh, more functionality, it's better for the people, the studios are built now to have the talent come in to actually use these studios and, and people outside who wanna build their businesses better. So you gotta kind of like start to look at it in those kind of terms instead of like looking back and like going, well, maybe I could fix this situation and, and it didn't really work out, but like, no, no, no. There were things that got stalled because there are things in the way of that. And it's those things that were in the way of that that fully, fully haven't kind of gotten erased that this is the eraser. Uh, uh, here on my iPad Pro, uh, Apple just put where you could double tap. And when I double tap, it erases, okay? And so as I'm erasing all this stuff, that's what this whole entire new moon on Neptune is. Now. My last new moon thing to tell you here is, now let me go back, but I'll tell you straight up, this new moon on Neptune is where you can feel the nothingness that I talked about last week, the void, the emptiness, because it's forcing us all to go deep in ourselves and fill ourselves up with compassion of what no longer is serving us, what no longer is of quality, and what no longer is on our spiritual path anymore. And so there becomes an empty feeling, like because certain, this is major chapters closing, these are things that are ending. And this is us being in tune and not looking at it as nothingness or as a void, but as a clearing and a, in a path of pure serenity, of transformation as far as how we are moving into a new energy and how we have to release it and there is a moment of release. It's like when you go through a bad breakup or when you go through a move and you're at that weird spot. There's that weird like, where is this all going next? That's us in every area of our lives right now. So I think that that void, the more that you 
get caught up into it, it'll take you out to sea. It'll make you feel like you're like out in the middle of nowhere because you feel like, oh, I need this or I, I need this. Uranus and Taurus starts to go like, do you really need that to make you feel good? <laughs> Is that what's gonna really fill the void? We are all on a search with Jupiter and Sag, with Mercury retrograde, squaring Jupiter and Sag on a deep search to what will fill that emptiness. And it is probably things that you thought it would be not turning out to be the answer. That there is something new, there is something better, there is something that also is probably already in your space that is amazing and beautiful. It's like Taurus is a beautiful garden and you have these you know, roses so you think, oh, like you're the, you're, imagine being the queen in, in Alice in Wonderland and paint the roses red, right? Oh my God. Da, da, da. Okay, like she might not even know that she had a whole entire like garden full of gardenias and maybe she needed to like take a whiff of that or put some gardenia like flower on her, you know, especially those flower oils and like she'd probably be chilled out and much better and a much beautiful and happier queen but I think that she wanted like this attachment to roses, you know, to feel like, especially red, right? To feel the love in her life because she didn't love herself. She obviously didn't take care of herself either. And she had a really weird husband too. But that's a whole other story. I'm just going to tell you that it's, it's not what you think. And, and I think she never got her void filled. You know, it's like she's forcing all the cards to paint the roses red and shit. Like demanding things so much. When you come into that space to fill the void and do these addictive things or do these things that you think are going to fill it and it just keeps not. This is forcing us to look at a different place. Look at new aspects, especially with Uranus, new people, new situations. And, and what is that in your life? And, and, and what do you have to clear in order to be able to even get to that space? So even though maybe she finds gardenias, she's got to have to maybe like tell all the like cards like, yo, get that five of clubs to you know, let, let's get rid of all this paint over here that we have and let's get rid of all these fields full of like white roses that we painted with horrible spray paint from like Home Depot. Like we got to like let this stuff go in order to really step into these beautiful things because it's almost like you're at this, especially with Mercury at the last degree as it retrogrades with Chiron right there in Aries. And if we look at that, you know, real quick here, I mean, Talk about an in-between place to be. That is the actual line of what makes and breaks astrology is the end and the new beginning. And so, you know, there are these aspects where we see something that we want, but it's the Chiron element that's saying, ah, 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 you got to heal some shit first by looking backwards and clearing stuff. So when Mercury comes back and when it comes over this spot and it conjuncts Chiron, we will understand what we let go of and this is a holy moment, the sun and Neptune that's coming with the moon to clear things out so we can have those things as we move into a bunch of this Taurus cycle and the sun in Aries, which is gonna be very powerful with a full moon in two weeks in Libra to rebalance things out and find new relationships and balance the good and the bad, balance the things that need to be cleared and the new things that come in. You know, you, you, know, you just kinda like, you know, as a human body, Okay, like, like I'm a horrible drawer. Okay, we eat food. It goes through our digestion and it becomes poop and then we poop it out, okay? But if you don't poop, <laughs> deep astrology loves to talk about pooping, by the way, and you just keep eating and then the belly gets bigger and then it doesn't go anywhere and then it just becomes gluttony, and then more importantly, it pops, and then, you know what I mean? Things don't go well, and then, you know, it just does not go well. So you got to look at this period, literally, and <laughs> you know the lunar cycle is the menstruation cycle for women of 28 days, so, like, if you don't have your period, like, you can't get rid of the old egg in order to create a new egg so you can have a baby. Like, it's pretty simple stuff. You need to look at this new moon cycle at the last degree or the last sign of the zodiac, even though we are going through the dark moon too, is like, we're all on our period. Even the guys, like we're all PMSed out. I don't know what that feels like, but I think that I kind of know. I've been noticing women because when I, I mean, 90% of the people who watch me are women. So that's pretty much all I talk to about astrology. Most dudes won't talk about it, but like all of them have having massive headaches and 
um, you know, migraines, um, you know, uh, like kind of this more kind of like, you know, menstrual cycle PMS period, right? I don't even know if that's what they call PMS when you have your period. I just am a guy, so I just know girls go through a period. So whenever girls go through, there's cramps, like, you know, these kind of things, like we're all kind of in that place. And you know what? I think girls handle periods way better than guys because when we get sick or we get hurt, like we could just become big babies and then we become the ones that are causing all the problems. Like women show up, go to the event with a period, with cramps, with a headache, and they still laugh and still have a good time. Us guys, you know, <laughs> geez, I got, you know, my fingernail fell off. Oh my God, I can't go tonight. Oh. So kind of an interesting way to look at things, right? So let's go to Thursday now uh, because we have the Sun-Neptune conjunction and, you know, the moon crossing over Mercury retrograde and Chiron. So I'll be real. Thursday is a very weird day, okay? Because here we are finally coming out of this new moon cycle. Now this is in the morning. So I think that, you know, as we come into the late after parts, with this moon that crosses Mercury retrograde, it's going to... The moon also is subconscious in the past and it's at the last degree of the zodiac. So this is us not emotionally attaching to some weird past stuff, but we also are going to emotionally start to look at with Mercury in between, which is the ruler of astrology, which is the hermetic alchemy, alchemy at the last degree of the zodiac. We are emotionally starting to understand what is on the horizon for us that we can get we have to emotionally learn to understand what we have to look back and let go about and karmically release. Venus at seven degrees. So, you know, things are almost done with Venus where, remember, Mars went retrograde at nine Aquarius, okay, in 2018, in June. So we're almost through Venus helping sweep up as the beautiful goddess she is, a lot of the masculine mess that was left on the planet and all the craziness that went on in the world. Mars at 14, almost starting to get close to that sextile to Neptune. Mars getting ready to try and Saturn. So Mars is actually, you know, in a, in a good spot, okay? But uh, it is that this weird element that Mars and Chiron are getting ready for their semi-square, okay? And so in order for us to move forward into better things, we can't feel like a weird sense of, I guess the best way to put it would be like, remember your value and your worth and don't let the weirdness of not understanding the, who you are fully or how to integrate all this stuff yet or it doesn't look the way that you want to exactly affect you. Like know that you're creating something great. Know that you're creating a positive new life. Know that you're creating something of, of, of value in yourself and, and find that. This is Taurus. Taurus is very nurturing. Why do you think the moon is exalted in Taurus? It's the only place the moon's exalted because Taurus knows how to nurture itself through a bath. People think that's a cancer thing. Yeah, we all know cancers love baths, but they, 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 it, it's different. Taurus is doing it to feel better physically, get the candles going. Get the, that's a moon and Taurus thing. You know, get some music on. This is a time for us to, to start to heal ourselves, to let go of our past by just doing things that make us feel good. Call your friend. Go, let's go to the jacuzzi. Call a friend on FaceTime. Let's talk and, you know, like play with cards or something. Or I don't know. Like there's, a, there, there's physical elements, massages right now. Or, you know, there's, you know, there's going to be some physical stuff. But when you're dealing with all the Neptune stuff, with the sun on Neptune, you're dealing with all this Mercury retrograde, Stuff in Pisces, like, it's about healthy stuff. It's not about getting all riled up into, like, like, yeah, let's feel good, like, by doing this crazy thing, you know? Like, Uranus and Taurus wants to do crazy things that feel good. Trust me, go back into your life from May into, especially, all the way till November, uh, the very beginning of November of 2018. You did crazy things to feel better. And this is us finding awesome, amazing, better things and raising our vibration. So uh, applying ourselves of how do we feel better now? Let's try something that makes us feel better. Let's try something that makes us feel better, that's positive, that helps us clear energy in a, in a, in a higher vibration, in a higher spiritual way. Like going to the event or watching the live stream on Saturday with me and the Peace Dealer and some special guests that are coming through. 
and then the moon comes into Aries, and we definitely, I think, that's what's weird about the seventh, is we, on, on Thursday, I feel like, okay, let's go. Like, okay, we went through that, sun's off Neptune, we got the sun also as well, coming with a nice sextile of Saturn. There's a lot starting to be like, let's go. So, so take your time this week. I already know it's Tuesday, coming in Wednesday. Like Wednesday, Thursday is definitely a little weird, but by Thursday night, it's like, we get through the Chiron thing with the moon, we get through all that, and we really go. And I think that, that, that technically, this is gonna be the first time that the moon crosses over Chiron and Aries since it was in there last year in, yeah, this is the first time we felt the moon in Chiron as it's going to be officially in Aries for this eight year cycle. So like officially it. So there's definitely a lot more to this portal that uh, I can go down deeper down the rabbit hole with you all for hours. I don't have all night though, because poor Craig and I have been driving in Vegas and all that stuff today. So I gotta get off this thing, but start doing your look at stuff. Like this is the first time the moon's gonna cross over. Chiron will, will officially be for eight years and it's set knowing that. And so there's definitely a lot of weird stuff there, but I think really positive new beginnings Thursday night. Friday, we're almost through this weird kind of, um, the portal's not over, but we're part of, through some of the weirder parts of the portal. Like look at that Venus at eight degrees, just one more degrees away to the nine. We've got the moon in Aries now, but it's going to, you know, it's not gonna square Saturn exactly um, until the nighttime. So I think that really, I think Friday is a pretty positive day to get things done, to get things back on track. The sun and Neptune's off. Mercury's now off the 29th degree, retrograde at 28. Things are definitely starting to move again and, and readjust after a big, big, big change in our lives and feeling and old stories ending and us clearing old stories by creating new stories and by us pooping while taking a new food, you know what I mean, energetically. So, you know, like there's, there's, there's a lot of that going on. And Mars is at 15 degrees exactly on the 15th. So guess what? It's halfway through Taurus, right? So now we are moving into a whole nother zone here and we were halfway through the transit and it is making that semi square over to Chiron. And Chiron on that same day goes to one degree. So it's off zero. And so a lot of the zero degree stuff is kind of ending. Uranus of course is at zero, but I think it helps to have Chiron officially understand at the one degree and be, be officially in the sign. And the moon will have passed that and it'll be a moon and Chiron, an Aries thing about emotionally finding some power. And I think that there's some good news that's gonna start to come in our lives uh, Thursday night and especially coming into Friday. I think that there's a lot of good news coming. The sun and Saturn are gonna be in sextile, so there's a lot of positivity there because if we look forward into Saturday, I mean, this is some really good energy. The reason why um, we do have Venus, which will cross over and be done with that whole entire weird cycle of the Mars retrograde at nine degree. That's gonna come off by Saturday night. The moon um, is gonna be at Aries. So yes, it's gonna square the south node in Pluto, but I think that this is gonna help us understand some of these old systems and, 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 and traditional aspects of ourselves that we hold on to, to let go and move into this new moon Uranus thing. And that's what it's gonna be that night. Moon's gonna cross Uranus, sun's gonna sextile Saturn, and more important than that, Venus comes off of the crazy retrograde of June of 20, June 26th of 2018 through September. And the weird stuff that went on then, and you starting to understand a lot better and a lot of the mess cleaned up there. And I think a lot of the, I guess you could say PMS energy or I think a lot of the fears or, you know, even though Mercury is retrograde in Pisces, I think this is a very positive moment. I think that this weekend's very, very positive because that moon crossing over Uranus is gonna set. You, you gotta look at the moon as an activator. The moon represents the month. So also it kind of is this, in my opinion, like it rules the minute, of course, moon minute, right? And the sun rules more of the hour, but there is this part of the moon that actually is kind of like to the minute initiating and pushing, pushing Uranus in. Because if you look at this, like Uranus, the moon in Aries and then coming right on top of zero uh, Taurus will push things in. So maybe some of the more kind of crazy ingress of Uranus stuff will happen Saturday, to be honest with you all. Um, but we, because we, we kind of are coming out of this whole kind of beginning part of the portal. And it, it is like taking like a, a psychedelic a little bit. Like it is kind of like, it takes a couple hours to get through the whole experience until you finally kind of get a grip on life a little bit and are able to 
experience whatever you're experiencing. And that's what these, these days are until Friday night, Thursday night, but really it's gonna be Friday and, and, and into Saturday. That's where you kind of go, okay, all right, we, we're in this now. So be easy on yourself, find things to make yourself feel better. And definitely don't try and push things that are, um, you know, I think the moon square Pluto and South node is like, don't push things that you don't want. But if you really want it, and it makes sense, and it's an alignment, like there's definitely a lot of edge, there's definitely a lot of passion, there's definitely a lot of like wanting to get deeper. On Sunday, we have, for the first time in 70 years, Uranus, the moon, and Mars in Taurus. And remember, Uranus and Mars are in not their favorite size. So Mars is in detriment and Uranus is in fall. But the moon is exalted. So we are getting all three except if we did have Venus and Taurus, we would have all four, which would be in dignity. So we would have that, but we don't. We have the moon in between and it's exalted of feeling better, having to understand these weird things we need to let go of even though we're trying to feel better. We can feel better by learning to let go, by re-identifying about, and I had a conversation last night actually about this, talking um, at the bar last night even though I was drinking Sprites. Um, I was talking about, you know, this person had Mars and Taurus, I had Mars and Scorpio. Like Mars and Scorpio is at home because it just will get what it wants. It just will penetrate, it'll just do. But you know, the thing about a detriment sign or, or planet in detriment per se would be, you know, it's not that it's horrible. It, it, it's just that, okay, I can't get it right away because I wanna make sure I have enough money or I wanna make sure that I feel right or I wanna make sure that I'm, if it's worthy for me in my life. So this is us, you know, really readjusting and realizing like it's okay that, you know, we're letting go of things and we're coming into new things with like kind of like this, uh, a little bit of like slower energy. And that's also with all the energy of this Pisces energy, right? It's like kind of like making sure with Mercury retrograde there, the sun and with the sun and, and Saturn that are in sextile, and then with Neptune, of course, which is sextiling over to Mars, that it really is in alignment with a better thing in our life and a better truth. So we're kind of spiritually get, being guided slowly. And there's that hermit energy. And Venus is at 10 degrees now. And the moon will square Venus. And the moon square Venus is definitely going to bring up a lot of things of like, okay, yeah, there are some things to move us into the future that maybe emotionally we do, as even though it makes us feel good, does it get us where we want to go? And there's an excitement too of maybe of us letting go of certain things, relationships, people, or, or, or wants or needs to ex experience new things, to feel new things. Remember Jupiter's at 22 degrees. And so there is this element that's getting close to its retrograde at 24 degrees in April. And so Jupiter is semi-sextiling Pluto. And there is this about experience through changing your old ways and changing the ways that you go about your life and that you do things. So, and, and, and learning to experience new ways, new things, and it doesn't need to be this like crazy fast, instant need to know it right away. I think having an open channel, an open mind, an open opportunistic element of this makes things easier. Let's you, you know, naturally let go of things easier by naturally letting things kind of easy in there's a, there is intensity with South Node and Pluto to want to have it quick. Uranus and Taurus teaching you, you don't need to, you want to make sure that you look around fully, but it doesn't mean that you can't have it. It just means like, let's just look at every doorway in a weird direction. Let's look at the algorithm. Let's think it makes sense. Like, let's take another look. You know, one thing I always taught myself through all the years of my life, I've bought in like fucking, I forgot how many cars in my life. I'm like 18 cars. But the one thing that I learned is I go look at a car, if I really want it, I test drive it, I look at it, and then I leave the dealer and I go sleep on it. Because in the past, I fucked up. I went and bought a two-wheel drive truck, then got stuck. And I was like, fuck, I need a four-wheel drive. Okay, well, I got the best four-wheel drive I wanted. Oh, wait, I have a trailer now. I need to get a, a Super Duty. Oh, wait, I didn't really think about, I need a dually Super Duty to pull this thing. And so I learned hard lessons by not sleeping on it. And, and you know what? Taurus is going to come up. This is going to be what's the funniest part about the future now. For years, I've been talking about Scorpio transits. So I've been talking about sex, and I've been talking about passion, and I've been talking about, you know, 
don't, if you don't like it, it doesn't smell good, get it the fuck out of here, right? Like, but you know, we're, to, we're going into tours now. So now we're gonna talk about a little bit more of like a little bit snobby. We're gonna talk about more money. We're gonna be talking about more physical stuff, which triggers the spiritual community a little bit, but it is because we are creating this new earth. So we gotta look at the physical elements of things. This is gonna bring up food a lot. This is gonna bring up a lot of this stuff. And so this is where everything's kind of moving. It's, but it's going to be bringing up kind of the physical quality of things and also where things are cheap, where things that you know are cheap and that you shouldn't waste your time and your energy on things, whether that's a person, whether that's a thing, whether that's a product, whether that's, there's a lot of that stuff that's going to come up. Now on Monday, last chart here, Mars and the moon are going to meet up. So moon and its exaltation, Mars and its detriment. But this is the moon trying to teach Mars like, hey, in order to feel good, I know that you want to take your time. That's cool because I'm down with that. But we can feel good if you identify with what makes you feel good fully and you know the value of that. You know what makes you feel good. And it's going to be making an awesome sextile over to Neptune and the sun. And as well as this awesome aspect to the moon to the Pluto, Saturn, South Node. So I think Monday, we start next week even though we are in a portal and there is a lot of craziness and there is a lot of change and there is a lot of things being let go. We start Monday, March 11th, in a very good place. We start where miracles truly, I believe, can happen by us finding a better life. The moon exalted with this is going to stabilize things. I do believe when we talk next week on next week's Deep Astrology, when the moon comes into Gemini, we'll create a little bit of chaos or change or questions or, oh my gosh, or what should I do or should I do this? Or, and because especially Mercury retrograde is going to be squaring that moon and then it's going to be in opposition to Jupiter and the sun square Jupiter with the moon in Gemini. I'm telling you, next week we start great because we build a new foundation of knowing how to take care of ourselves, accept this new energy, letting the old past go, letting things go, accepting new things, being open to things, but there's going to be some chaotic energy that starts um, by the 12th and more, really, it'll be the 13th and 14th. It'll be the 13th, 14th. So I'm just giving you a little heads up there. Now, I know that I'm going to end this right now, but I just want to tell everybody that this portal is very important because it's not only just a portal of three weeks. It is the portal that is exiting out of, uh, us all out of this last six and a half years. It's a portal that is exiting. Let's look at the exiting of the portal. We are exiting the six and a half year portal of the Scorpio transits. We are exiting the portal of the Pluto Uranus transits that were in cardinal signs since 2010. We are exiting out of Uranus and Aries as a 10 year transit. We are exiting out of the Chiron and Pisces transit by Mercury finally retrograding over that 29th degree spot. And even though, yes, in you know, about a month and a half, like when Mercury finally crosses over, you know, and gets out of the 29th degree, it'll be fully understood, that whole weird paradox of that. But, you know, there's a lot of cycles of portals that was an old, bigger portal ending, and a new big portal has opened here. And so, you know, take it with time. Take it with grace. This is a time with a lot of Taurus and a lot of Pisces and a lot of Capricorn. And these signs are slower. These signs evaluate these signs take their time. They, they also come with uh, you know, a, a, a deep sense of integrity with spiritually, a sense of integrity of worth, and a sense of integrity within itself of a higher purpose and path. And I think that if you can guide yourself by those motives and guide yourself by not getting caught up into dramatic situations over it not going the way that you want to or trying to fix and repair something that you already know is chaotic, you will make it through this beginning of the portal beautiful. If you don't double down on doing toxic things and double down on doing clearing and higher vibrational things, you will definitely step into a much, much better path. I want to thank you all very much for all those that came uh, to Phoenix and supported me at that meet and greet to have, I think it was over 60 people in 24 hours show up, it was mind blowing to me. And all of you and all the gifts that I, that I was given and, and, and the love that we all shared and the channeling that we all talked about, I wish I had that thing filmed, but a lot of it I did tonight, but there was some deep, deep stuff there. And I just wanna let you know that there are people all around this country in America, there are people all around this world that are all on the same page right now and that nobody's better than anybody during this spiritual new portal. I think Uranus and Aries kind of 
you know, started especially even with myself, calling people out in the spiritual community that I think are too dogmatic or whatever. And I think that we all have to drop our own, um, I guess you could say, criticism about others in the community and within ourselves and with others in just general out of the community or whatever. And I think that there's a new portal. It's a fresh new start, but it's a fresh new start of coming to things that are the best for us. So I think it's important for us to kind of give everybody kind of the, the, the compassion and the release of what's happened, but also, you know, if there are things that just really were not the best or didn't work out, they're over and they're over, over. And knowing that and looking at the new things and approaching things from a new place and allowing ourselves to really let this new community and let this new spirituality grow and make something great. We don't need to rush the new spiritual community. We do not need to make crazy decisions so fast about how the new thing's going to be. It's a very formulative process right now. It's a very, you know, enriching process. And I think if we all can enrich each other right now, and if we all can enrich each other in the new direction, we are all going to thrive. And I think that that is the biggest, most important thing that we can learn on a higher collective conscious scale of what's going on right now. Thanks so much for all your support. Tomorrow we will be doing spiritual dance music. Make sure that you check that out. We do that live on my YouTube. Thanks for all the support. Please follow me on Instagram because I'm doing a lot on Instagram right now and I'm doing a lot of Q&As on there with lives. And I'm going to be putting out that content then again on YouTube, but you don't get to see the question and the answers and you don't get to get it. So um, definitely join me on my Instagram at the Leo Kingdom. Of course, we stream this show live, um, Deep Astrology, on Facebook because, of course, we can't do a live in studio. And I am live, literally throwing this pen right now at 10:20, okay, like p.m. Pacific. And Uranus comes into Taurus literally in two hours. And I just want to give you all my best, best regards into finding your best life ever. You have to allow it to be that way, though. And that is only within yourself, allowing yourself to have it and let go of what is not the best for you. I love you all, and I'll see you soon.